Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov and I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we are going to travel across all the seas, many countries. Our program is titled Becoming Dentons and my guest is Paul Alston. Paul has been practicing law in Hawaii for over 40 years and is the co-founder and president of Alston Hunt Floyd and Ng which was one of the largest local Hawaii law firms with offices in Honolulu and Hilo. Alston Hunt Floyd and Ng has recently combined with Denton's, the largest law firm in the world. Denton, Denton's presently has more than 9,000 lawyers in more than 167 locations in 73 countries on six continents. And that is a lot. And Paul, Thank you very much for being here. My pleasure. Uh, first of all, I want, I want to talk about Denton's for sure. sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, it's just, it's just amazing to when I read out those, those figures. It is. Uh, but <clears throat> who's Paul Alston? Where, where are you from? How did you get to Hawaii? Uh, and how did you form Alston Hunt Floyd Ning? What, 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 uh, what, what's a little bit of background on you first? Sure. Um, I grew up in Southern California, uh, surfing every weekend. All right. When I was young uh, and just beginning high school, I committed with three friends to move to Hawaii and ride big waves. <laughs> and then it was two friends, and then it was one friend, and then it was nobody. And I had worked all through high school to achieve the dream of coming to Hawaii. Because of the big waves. Because of the big waves. And so I graduated on Friday, and on the following Tuesday, I was here with my surfboard and a wow. skateboard. And a, my mother said, if you're going to go for too long, you've got to go to college. So I walked up to UH and enrolled, and uh, the rest is history. I've been here ever since, except for five years on the mainland for law school. And where did you go to law school? USC. USC, and then, uh -huh. and then you, you came back, you still wanted to surf. Right, yeah, I, I, still, I still want, well, no, in the meantime, um, I married a woman from Hilo. Okay. And it, then it became a choice of downtown LA or downtown Honolulu, uh, or Honolulu in general. And I had clerked for a, a judge, uh, the federal, federal judge downtown, and realized that living and working in Los Angeles was really not what I aspired to and, uh, and not good for our then two-year-old daughter. So, so you, you clerked while at law school? At, just after law school, a year after law in, school. In Los Angeles? In Los Angeles, I right. See. And then um, while I had been in law school, I clerked here for a summer with Dan Case's law firm, okay. which was then one of the biggest firms in town. And the th three other law clerks and I wrote a manifesto to Dan saying, we love the firm, we love you, but the firm doesn't do enough for the poor and the middle class. So if you'll let us do uh, some pro bono work, we'll be happy to accept the offers that you've extended and, and work with you. To, to uh, return and, and to return after uh, after law school, and, right? and and he said if we were impetuous punks, <laughs> which we were, and so uh, Bob Leclerc and I literally walked down the street to the legal aid office and got jobs at legal aid, and okay. and I ended up uh, at the four four two barracks in Y and I for two and a half years. And uh, it was great fun because there were no adults to supervise us and no, nobody to say no to whatever sort of. Uh, idea we had. Well, 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 why did you want to do this? I mean, look, you're getting, uh, uh, everybody thinks that, you know, lawyers are out there to make money, and I guess we are to a certain extent, but why, why did you want to, why did you feel this need? Where did that come from? You know, it was, it was part of the culture in law school that you, you know, law, lawyers have the ability to make things right for people who are being hurt, and whether it's hurt by the government or hurt by, uh, some some predatory creditor or something like that. You could you could actually do good things. And so uh, we went out to Y and I. There were four lawyers uh, for a population of twenty five thousand people. And our brief was to do whatever the people in the community needed to help them in legal aid. To help them in legal aid. And okay. so we did criminal cases. We did family cases. We did federal court cases. The first lawsuit I ever filed was a class action against the Department of Education. The first lawsuit? The first lawsuit. Oh, ever. my God. And this was 44 years ago, which is 
uh, you know, it gives me a great sense of deja vu all over again with respect to <laughs> the continuing problems. With, with, with education. With, with and, education. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, amazing. Yeah, amazing. and it was, yeah. It's like we're, we are, you're right, we're kind of going through the we're, same thing again. You know, we, we were, my firm uh, with uh, Eric Seitz who served as lead counsel in the Felix case. And there will be more cases like Felix because the day Judge Ezra lifted the consent decree, the DOE began backsliding, and now it's worse than it ever. And how are we going to take care of our kids? Exactly. Is, is, is the, the big issue, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so you, you worked at Legal Aid, uh, and I assume you're still surfing. Right. Uh, and, and, then, and then what happened? You, okay, you, so after five years, um, I just got burned out. I mean, we were, I was supervising 20 lawyers at the time, and it was just, it was just seven days a week, you know, and uh, 15 hours a day, something like that. It was, a, it was a great job, but it was just, you know, wearing me out. So I started a, a small firm with two other people. And who, who were uh, Jim Paul and Dave Johnson. Oh, okay. And uh, that was in this the fall of 1977. Were those buddies of yours? Yeah, they were buddies. We were all, you know, all the same age, you know, and, and uh, uh, they had left the Carl Smith firm and started a, a small firm, and I joined, and we quickly reformed that into Paul Johnson and Alston. And we grew that firm from three lawyers to 18 lawyers, and they thought that was too big. I mean, it's, you know, they thought there were just too many people and too much turmoil in terms of hiring and people, you know, coming and going. And, and so in 1991, we split uh, nine lawyers and nine lawyers. And the, the, the other people who came with me thought we were just beginning. The fund was just beginning. We could grow something bigger. Was that your, your feeling? Oh, uh, absolutely. And so yeah. what did, and was that the firm now, Alston Hunt Floyd and Inc., was that right. the, the name of That's, the firm at that time? Right. And yeah. there were two women partners, two male partners, and we had, uh, you know, just the, the vision that we could, we could grow a, a firm that could, you know, do more than we could as a small firm. Well, why, why, why do you say that? I mean, what, what, is the, what does size have to do with it? I mean, it well, almost sounds like it's a political statement here. Yeah. But, but. but, you know, if you get bigger, you know, you tend to attract bigger cases. You tend to attract things that are more difficult and challenging and professionally rewarding. I mean, just intellectually rewarding. And uh, if you... If you build a firm around friendship and you build a firm where you know you have good people who are good friends, then it just becomes more fun to practice law. And, and that's uh, what we thought we were we uh, were achieving. Alston Hunt, Floyd and Egan were all friends. Right. You all, you're all still together. You're all. Well, yeah. Shelby retired. Okay. Shelby Floyd retired. She abandoned her law license to go into the marijuana business, and, <laughs> and uh, we wished her well. The legal, we the legal, her, the legal medical marijuana, marijuana yes, business. Yes. Let's get that clear. And we wished her well. She ended up getting a, 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 uh, being the licensee for one of the Big Island uh, dispensaries. Okay. Uh, and, but the other three of us, uh, Bill Hunt and uh, Louise Zing and me, are still, still working together. And, okay. Uh, and are you, as Alston Hunt, Floyd Ning, did you continue to do the outrageous pro bono work for, for people that uh, yeah, you did. said you wanted to do when you were just a young we, law, we, law student? We did, we did. We, we, as I mentioned, we were uh, co-lead counsel in the Felix case. Uh, we brought class actions for homeless kids who were not attending school because the DOE simply was, wasn't providing for them. We brought uh, the lawsuit that resulted in the refurbishment of uh, Cujo Park Terrace. Uh, we brought a lawsuit challenging the failure to provide time, food stamps in a timely manner. Uh, we brought the case that was recently settled for foster children, which produced, it's, it's going to produce about $100 million in additional payments for foster parents over the next 10 years. And all, all of this is through your, fr your pr private firm? All through the private firm. And, and it's on a pro bono basis. Right. right? And, 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 and what happens is we take these cases on with the hope that we will get paid something uh, at the end. It's right. never what we could make working yep. for commercial clients. No guarantee. But we, it helps pay the rent. And, it, and most importantly, it helps us give uh, young lawyers the opportunity to jump into court, take responsibility for some, an important matter, and learn how to be you know, a first chair lawyer. And so we've always used it as a, as a way to, to serve the community and serve the, the young lawyers who are trying to build careers.
Okay, so yeah. Alston Hunt, Floyd and Ng, right. hey, did pretty good here in Hawaii. We're, we're, we're growing, growing. You had quite a few attorneys, right? Yeah, we ended up with, uh, at, at the high point, about 55 lawyers, which made us the fourth largest firm in Hawaii. Who's Denton's? <laughs> what did, how, you know, who, what, yeah. how did they come into the picture? Yeah, well, I had a friend with whom I'd worked on cases for about 10 years on various cases in Hawaii. And uh, one day we were down at the Hale Kalani watching the hula dancers in the sunset, and he leaned over and said, would you be interested? And I said, should I be? I don't know, you know, I mean, why, why? You know, we seem to be doing pretty well on our own. Why would, why would we think about, you know, joining uh, what was then uh, about a 7,000 lawyer firm. This was uh, how long ago was this? This is two years ago. Two, two years ago. Okay. Yeah, seven, they were about 7,500 then. And it's a buddy from Hawaii that you're talking to? Uh, and actually, a buddy, he was a, a buddy from Dallas, Texas. Oh, okay. And so he was out here working on a case. And, and then that follow, follow, what followed that in short order was a meeting with the chairman, the global chairman and the global CEO. And we just had a lot of, a lot of things in common in terms of how do you approach the practice of law. Okay, before we get there, what, what, what is Denton's? I mean, Denton's de is, define it, please. Okay, Denton's is a Varain, which is a, a business organization. That's a legal term. Uh, that's it, a business organization business. under Swiss law. Oh, okay. And, and in simple terms, it's a partnership of partnerships, so that there is a, a Denton's US, there's the, the Da Cheng, the, the Chinese entity, and we're all under one umbrella around the world practicing together in a in a partnership. Okay. And when did Denton start? And about 10 years ago. And it was wow. it was the merger of three firms uh, in different places around the world. And um, from that seed grew this uh, the, the firm that exists today. And the three firms around the world one of them was Denton's? Or well, one, one of them was, was uh, uh, had the name Denton's in it. It was Denton Weil Sapp, which is a, a, out, out of the UK. Uh, and there was a man named John Denton in the, in the 1750s. <laughs> um, and you know, be, because the name was so on, you know, if you try to do what many lawyers do and include everybody's name in the name, it doesn't work, so they shortened right, it right. to Denton's. So, so Denton's uh, is like a possessive in a way, is that? Is that no. no there, 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 there was a Denton? There was, there was a, a Denton. About 300 years ago. About 300. He was a lawyer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And, and uh, it was a British firm, and so all these firms, they, they, they've been around for a while, but the, the Denton's right. itself just formed about 10 years ago. Right. At, there was, a, there was a, a firm in the U.S. called Sonnenschein, uh, which became, through a, the first tier merger, SNR Denton. And then uh, there was a firm out of Canada, a firm in, on the European continent, and the firms just started coming together. And if you were to look on our website, you would see you know, the, the, the legacy firms uh, from across the country and across the world. And, and it sounds like something happened. Uh, and we're going to take, take a break, but it sounds like all at once, uh, some sort of synchronistic feeling happened, and, and I want yeah. you to answer that All right. after we take a break. Okay. All right? We'll be right back. I'm Jay Fidel, Think Tech. Think Tech loves energy. I'm the host of Mina, Marco, and Me, which is Mina Morita, former chair of the PUC, former legislator, and uh, Energy Dynamics, a consulting organization in energy. Marco Mangelsdorf is the CEO of ProVision Solar in Hilo. Every two weeks, we talk about energy, everything about energy. Come around and watch us. We're on at noon on Mondays, every two weeks on ThinkTech. Aloha. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on ThinkTech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then.
Welcome back. I am Mark Shklov, host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea, and I'm here with Paul Alston, uh, becoming Dentons. And we're talking about how Dentons became. Uh, and there were, you, you mentioned that about 10 years ago, it seemed like several firms from different places combined had the same idea. Or, right. Well, what, they, what, they, they, they came together. And then the leadership of the firm realized that clients didn't have needs that were just limited to one city, one state, one country. They had needs around the world. Times are changing. Times are changing. And if you wanted, if you wanted to best serve the, the clients, you needed to be able to assure them that the firm could provide high quality representation, not just in London, not just in New York, but in all the places around the world where they might find themselves doing business. And what we found when we began talking with Dentons was that uh, out of the firm's top 100 clients, over 60 ha had a presence in Hawaii already. Wow. And we found that we represent, independently of Dentons, we, rep we represented over 20 of those clients. I see. And so there, you know, there became it became obvious pretty quickly that there was going to be some synergy with respect to uh, being able to provide services in Hawaii. Uh, what we also found was that Hawaii clients had needs outside of Hawaii, and so we we determined also very quickly that if a client called, instead of having to go hunt for a lawyer in New York or San Francisco or Dubai or Italy, as some clients have asked us to do, we, we would have people. And we'd have people- Within work, your one firm. Within the one firm, working on the same platform, you know, meeting the same standards, committed to the same quality of service that uh, we, we were committed to already. And so that was very exciting to be able to so, so, so you, you're, you're watching the, the hula at right. the Hale Kalani, yeah. and your friend leans over, and he had something on his mind, and right. said, said, hey, how about this? And, and then you got, what was the process? What was the process of, of, of finding out that you were compatible or, yeah. or that you work, could work together well, with, with Dentons, which had, you know, for the past 10 years been growing, apparently, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and with thousands of lawyers all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, you know. Well, you know, we knew, we knew many of the legacy firms, uh, so we knew them and, and the, the quality of work they were doing. And you know. those are firms that have gone into dentists. Into dentists, right. And so we knew them. And one of our partners actually worked at one of the legacy firms in New York. And so she knew the people and she knew the quality of the work they did. Uh, and it then took close to two years to try to, to bring it all together to talk about it. And did, right. they, did they explain? To, I mean, did they explain to you? I mean, how did? How do you? Is it just cocktails at no, Holly Kalani that no, brings the it, firms together? That, that, was, that was just you know the the initial contact. And then, as I said, we met. I met with the, the global chairman, the global CEO in San Francisco, and then they sent. Uh, uh, Four people out from the U.S. Uh, leadership group to see if we, if, if we were real, you know, if we really uh, were who we said we were, and that series of meetings went well. And then last year, uh, last summer, we went to the global partnership meeting in Toronto, where there were 2,400 people wow. uh, from literally from around the world. Uh, that series of meetings went well, and it just sort of evolved. I and mean, we just kept exploring the, the business case for uh, coming together. You know? To me, it kind of makes sense for Hawaii to be in, in something like that, because we do have uh, uh, cross-cultural meetings and people from all over the world right. coming through here for various reasons, and companies mm -hmm. that are international, I can see that. Is that is that kind of same feeling that you had? Or? Yeah, well, very much so. Because I, I knew I knew I never wanted the firm to be the distant Western outpost of a U.S. firm. Right. That that makes no sense. Uh, but Denton's is committed to the Pacific Rim. Uh, there are four thousand five hundred lawyers in China alone. Uh, we have lawyers in Korea, in Singapore, in uh, Australia. We just opened in, in Indonesia and Malaysia. Wow. And so, you know, in terms of a firm that, that recognized the future 
lying in the Pacific, this was a, a tremendous opportunity. I, 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 I wanted to mention China again. Right. I, I want to take a look at the logo right. that you have uh, for Dentons, and it, it's kind of it, it's unusual. It has Dentons, and then it has some Chinese characters. What's what's the the story of that? What's yeah. That the, about? Well, when the when the non-China firm was thinking about expanding into China, uh, the firm had to, to not only make an agreement with the, fir with the Chinese firm, but also with the government, because uh, it was the first time that, that uh, a Chinese firm was becoming part of a, leader, a, a bigger international enterprise. And um, what, one of the thoughts expressed by the Chinese government was that if this was going to happen, then the, the Chinese characters needed to be part of the name of the mm -hmm. firm. And as you can see, they became the first part of the name of the firm. But it means Da Cheng, da Cheng yeah. which, which was uh, the, the legacy name of the, uh, of the Chinese firm. So that's to identify and keep the uh, identity of the Chinese partner, right. our, our associate. Correct. Within the firm, I see. Correct. And, and they are, the Chinese partners are full partners in the, in the firm just as we are. So it's a, well, it's very me, exciting. Explain to me what, what that means, because it right. says you combined with them. Right. What, what does that mean? Ah, it, well, it wasn't a traditional merger because we were, we were a corporation and Denton's is a partnership. And so it's, you know, under the tax law, business law, it's, it's hard. you can't just merge a corporation into a partnership. So we combined. Okay. Well. Yeah. All right, that's an interesting. Right. Uh, and and you're you're are you a partner of yes. Denton's? I see. I yeah, see. And the, right. the people who were partners in Alston Hunt are now partners in Denton's. Okay. Now, what did you tell your clients? And I mean, and what are the pros and cons for clients? What if I don't want to? Hey, I I like you, Paul, but I I'm not sure about the guy in San Francisco. I I have another lawyer there. What what do you tell your clients? Well, look, it. Um, one of the things that was most attractive to me is that unlike some big firms, they don't come with a manual and say this is how you how you are to act, this is how you are to treat clients, this is how you are to uh, do business day by day. What they came and said was, uh, we know you know how to treat clients well. We know you know how to how to uh, uh, provide great service to clients in the community and from beyond the community. We want to continue that. We, we don't want to change what you're doing. We want to do it better together. And that was really attractive uh, because we didn't want somebody. They didn't impose something on you. No, they didn't impose anything. Yeah. They said, let's just, let's go make, let, let's build to collaboratively on what, what we've both been doing. And that's what you told your clients? Right. And that's what we told our clients. Right. And, you know. and, was, and what was the reaction? Uniformly positive. And how about the pro bono stuff? I mean, Paul Alston, was, Paul Alston is a pro bono guy. <laughs> He's a good guy. Does these these cases? What right. happened there? Well, you know, it was, it was very interesting because in the first conversation, um, they said that that Dentons is a firm that's committed to pro bono work as well. In 2017, Dentons contributed 35 million dollars worth of pro bono work. Wow. Uh, just last month, they committed $2 million in pro bono work to uh, clean energy initiatives. Uh, and they said, we love what you're doing. We want you to keep doing it. We want to support it. We want you to teach us how you've been doing it and build on that success. So, so that kind of caught your attention. The, the boy, the law, the law school kid yeah. who thought he should do pro bono we kind of identified with we're that. We're still doing it, yeah. I see. Yeah. So okay. that's, that's very exciting. The, that's very exciting. I mean, one of the things that uh, you you can see on the brochure is that we talk about the firm being in and of the community. It's not just being in the community in a in a way that's uh, not contributing to the community, but being of the community because our lawyers are out doing work in in nonprofits in various ways that support the the, the well-being of the community, and that's important. It was important to them. It was important to us, and now. Uh, we're, and now that we're together, it's important to all of us. So just being big isn't isn't the goal here. No, uh, no. Oh, yeah. what did the local community, the local law firm community, they saw this, uh, and what what was the reaction? Was uh, you know, I don't. Uh, the, the only the only reaction that I can see is that one one lawyer, as you may know, complained that uh, to the Supreme Court that we shouldn't be able to practice law anymore because we we are not. Uh, 
just a, a small firm, we, we are a big firm, and he said that that violated the, the court's rules. Um, we looked very hard at that issue uh, before we did the combination. We found that there were uh, four or five firms, local firms, that have done what we have now done, but on a small, smaller scale, um, most notably the Carl Smith firm, which 30 some years ago combined with a California law firm. Uh, and, no, and no one complained about them uh, doing what we've done. And so we decided this was, in fact, permissible, and we've gone forward. And his challenges are still pending, but we are hope, hopeful and confident that uh, they're, they're not going to go anywhere. Okay. What have you what have you learned from all of this in this uh, uh, you know t taking your career from beginning to end to now <laughs> to now you know what 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 have you learned from all of this and going forward with Dentons where, what what are your hopes you know it, it's um, for me personally I'm a, I'm 71 now uh, I don't expect to be practicing for all that much longer I still love what I do and I still I don't have any in, intention of uh, stopping, but uh, for the younger people in the firm, this is really a tremendous opportunity. Um, we had the chairman of the firm come out uh, last week, and he sat with everybody in the firm and asked about them and asked what they were interested in. And to me, the most impressive thing was he's to everybody, he said, after hearing what they want to do with their careers, he said, you know, you should be in touch with so-and-so in Hong Kong or so-and-so in Shanghai or somebody in New York, or because they're doing what you... Within the Denton's... Within the Denton's firm, firm. yeah. You should talk to our partner, so-and-so, in, in this city or that city, because they're doing what you, you're doing, and together you can, do, you can both do it better. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, is the most exciting thing for uh, the firm and for the young lawyers in the firm. It's not a matter of... Uh, you know, them being, you know, in a, in a little rowboat in the middle of the ocean. Uh, we now have a, a, a much bigger platform for people to launch careers. You, you have a network and uh, a group of friendly colleagues. Yes, very and, much that, so. that, And it sounds like uh, some of the same uh, feelings about the practice of law. Yeah, very much so. So, well, Paul. I appreciate you coming in today and talking to us about Dentons. Uh, it'd be very interesting to see how it moves forward, right. you know, and, and it's growing still, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. As you mentioned, there's more, right. more lawyers co coming all the time right. to it. Right. It's an interesting aspect of the law. I'd like to, you know, view it and see, see how it moves forward, and I appreciate your, to you, you coming to, to talk to me. Thank you, sir. Anytime. Thank you. All right. Aloha, everybody.